So now that we've seen the discrete time convolution and seen the impulse response, I guess one question is, what kind of information do we need to figure out what the impulse response is? And so this is just a short sort of description of that process. So what I'd like to do is be able to find the impulse response of a discrete time system from an input-output formula. So if I tell you that some relationship between the input x and the output y, can you use that to derive the impulse response of the system? And uh, because that's how we describe systems often, we say uh, how x and y are related, but that doesn't give us the, the convolution form that we need to do to compute convolutions. It doesn't give us the impulse response. So remember, we have this convolution formula, and we had this, uh, this was x star h, and this is h star x, and they're the same. So both formulas are valid. So the question is, if I give you some relationship between yn and xn, or different delays of y's and x's, values of x's, can we write down h of n? And the answer is, well, uh, yes, if, if the if the relationship between y and x is, is linear, uh, because we need to have a linear and, and time invariant system, then we need it to be a linear and time invariant relationship, and uh, then we can. So what, do, what are we actually looking for? Well, it's pretty easy if y of n is already a linear combination of delayed versions of x, so if it's already a linear combination of delayed versions of x, then basically you can take a formula like yn equals 3xn plus minus 2xn minus 1 minus x n minus 3, so this one over here, and you can just replace replace x with delta, with the impulse function. And why is that? Because, uh, because when you look at the uh, impulse response uh, formula, uh, the convolution formula, you can see that if I convolve x with these these three signals and then add them up, because remember we're looking at something linear, then I'm just going to get 3xn, 2 minus 2xn minus 1, and minus xn minus 3. That is, a delta of n minus uh, k is a system that delays its input. by k. Right, so this is a, a system with impulse response delta of n minus k. Right, so if I can write down a formula like this, I can just replace all the x's with deltas, and I get my impulse response. So that's the name of the game. That's what we'd like to be able to do. So let's do an example, uh, and then you should try some examples on your own. So. Our goal, remember, is to rewrite y of n as a linear combination of delayed versions of x of n. And then what we can do is find the impulse response by just replacing the letter x with the letter delta everywhere. So we think of this as, we, so what we're saying is basically h of k is the coefficient of x of n minus k. So let's try a more complicated example than the one we saw uh, in the last slide. Let's try one which has recursion. And so what do I mean by recursion? I mean that x of n depends on y of n, and it also depends on a past value of y of n. So let's say it's um, y of n minus alpha y of n minus 1, and that's equal to x of n. So this is kind of like a differential equation, a little bit, but it's a difference equation. It's called a difference equation because it's in discrete time. So what is the first step? Well, the first step is we want to write y of n equals something. So let's start out with that. We'll say y of n equals my alpha y n minus 1, I just move that this move this term over to the other side, and we, we get this first line here. So just as rewriting 5 by moving one term over. Now what do we do? We substitute, substitute, we substitute this thing into, into, into here. So we take this y n minus 1, and we say, well, y n minus 1 according to this formula, is equal to alpha y n minus 2 plus x of n uh, minus 1. Right, so that's why I'm, I'm just replacing n here by n minus 1 here. 
right? And so then this n minus 1 becomes n minus 2, and this n becomes an n minus 1, and so I get this, and I just plug that in. So what do I get? Well, I had alpha, I'm looking at alpha times y n minus 1, so this is going to be alpha squared here and plus an alpha there. So I get alpha squared y n minus 2 plus alpha x n minus 1 plus x of n. And then I can repeat the thing. I can repeat this process uh, again. So y n minus 2 is equal to alpha y n minus 3 plus x n minus 2. We plug that in here, and we get alpha the cubed y of n minus 3 plus alpha squared x of n minus 2 plus alpha x n minus 1 plus x of n. So we can repeat this. Just We can do this process infinitely long. And what do we get at the end? Well, we're going to get at the end, you know, as we go off to infinity, that y of n is equal to the sum of alpha to the k, x of n minus k. Here we see alpha to the 2, n minus 2, alpha n minus 1, alpha to the 0, n minus 0. And so we can see this is just going to be uh, in the limit. As we repeat this process, we're going to get exactly this expression here. So what does that mean? So that means that this alpha k is uh, is equal to, so h of k equals alpha to the k for uh, k greater than 0. Or in terms of n, we get it for n greater than or equal to 0. And it's 0 otherwise. And so another way we can write this is just h of n is since it's 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 zero for n le, um, negative n's we can just write it in with a with a unit step function uh, h of n is alpha to the n u of n. So it's worth going over this example yourself, writing it out yourself, um, just to see how the steps work, because it's a little tricky the first time you uh, you try to go over it. So uh, once you get the hang of it though, it's uh, fairly straightforward. And so to that end. Maybe you should try some problems on your own. So here are a couple different uh, problems for which you can try to find the impulse response. This first one has recursion. The second one doesn't have recursion. The third one has recursion. And the fourth one maybe is a little bit trickier. It doesn't seem to have much recursion. But uh, and so, but you know, it does have this sort of infinite, infinite impulse response. So you have to sort of figure out what that, that one looks like yourself. And so try these problems out on your own. Try to make up some of your own. Just you can make up new coefficients here, you know, new coefficients for, for these, these terms, and then see what you get. Uh, you can try simpler ones where you first, you know, you first kind of get rid of this one and just try it with uh, y of n is minus a half, y n minus 1. You should get something similar to the case where we had the alpha. Try it then with y plus 1 half, y n minus 1. Then you'll get another answer. So in doing this, you can sort of start to play around with and see, get a feel for how the recursive relationship between input and output can generate different types of different looking impulse responses.